is such that, and with respect to the last bullet, um, education and employment, I've already gone through and done a rather uh, explicit account of how um, the system has been structured to um, devalue the education and specifically the educational opportunities of minorities, right? Insofar as we've um, arbitrarily aligned property tax to educational opportunities. And if you want to see more on that, just watch the video on uh, Johan Galtung's structural violence, right? But we see how structurally our system is, is constructed to devalue, to undermine, to dehumanize those um, who aren't part of this normative, normativized uh, whiteness, to be technical. Next is behavioral. And the question is, uh, well, what is the behavioral problem for the black community, right? The behavioral problem is what I've identified as motivational. So you'll have individuals who, who, who will say that the problems for the African American community within the U.S. is a structural problem. You'll have others who will say, no, the problem for the African American community is a behavioral, a motivational problem. And this is where I want to tie it back into what I said earlier, the, the waning of the Protestant ethic, right? This is what um, West says. So Cornell West says that behaviorally, the identity is that um, the norm, those in power, hegemony, hegemony has embraced the Protestant ethic, right? The Protestant work ethic. You should work diligently. You should work hard. There's a way in which you should work. Um, laziness is ungodliness. You know, idle hands are the tool of the devil. All of this, all of this stuff that you hear as a child, right? So there's an indoctrination of this Protestant ethic. Um, work, work. Um, they say work harder, work, work smarter, not harder. Uh, but the actuality is that people work just the opposite. People work harder, not smarter, right? Um, so Wes says that this is the waning of the Protestant ethic. The next point is a failure in responsibility, right? Well, you say, well, they, right? We dehumanize them. We say, well, they, they just are irresponsible. Collectively speaking, they're an irresponsible group of people. They're a lazy group of people, right? These are some of the, these are some of the things that you'll hear. Why is it? Well, they just lack the motivation, right? They're, they're behaviorally, they just, they, they just lack the motivation. And then lastly, um, we talk about the impulsivity, right? And the question and the point is, is that, well, you know, they just, they fail to defer their gratification, right? They, whoever the they is, they, um, this class of people, this minority group, they want it and they want it now. And they will spend, um, and you know, to an extent, this is true. All of this is true, unfortunately, <laughs> to some regard, for some members of the population. But you'll see someone who um, has a, you know, $500 rental and um, a $45,000 Mercedes-Benz parked in the front. The, the question is, well, what's the logic in that, right? That you'll have a $500 car with, you know, $4,000 rims. What's the logic in that, right? There is a logic. There is a logic. No one's described that logic. I'm going to spend a substantial uh, amount of my time attempting to describe that logic, not in this lecture. But um, the problem that faces the African-American community as a concept of this uh, nihilistic way of thought is, according to West, behavioral and structural. So what we end up recognizing is, insofar as we've identified the problems, we now have an opportunity to, to uh, identify solutions to these problems. And the solutions are, uh, at, at first, it seems rather, rather obvious, right? So this, these will be two solutions, S-O-L-U, solutions. The first is what's known as liberal structuralism, right? Liberal structuralism. All right, so the first is liberal structuralism. Okay, the, the notion of liberal structuralism, the first point is that it addresses the concerns of the structural problem. Remember, when we're talking about structural problems, we're talking about systemic problems. Those problems that are affected um, more or less by Galton's notion of structural violence, right? So discrimination, historical effects of slavery, educational under, uh, educational, um, um, lack of educational opportunities, um, underemployment, and so on. The liberal structuralists attempt to revert the problems within structural violence by infusing and transforming the nature of 
the structure. So structures identified as primarily, right? These identify structures as primarily or uh, primarily political and economic. Right? We're identif when we're talking about structures, right? When we're talking about structures, we're specifically talking about political and economic structures, right? Uh, for the liberal structuralists. So some examples that the liberal liberal structuralists will attempt to do to um, to transform the structural dilemma that African Americans face is they would argue for expanded health care, educational reform, affirmative action, etc., 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 etc. So you can think of this um, obviously as being liberal, very leftist, right? And there's varying degrees of leftist, but very various degrees of uh, Left this interpretation, but we recognize that there is systemic um, disproportionate imbalances within the system, and the way that we assist the community is not by assisting the community directly in sort of acts of charity, but in acts of transforming the system of their oppression. So, insofar as we transform the system of their oppression, then we can, um, can you know, contribute to the emancipation of the people as such. The last part of uh, liberal structuralism is that they focus on obviously combating systemic problems, right? And as I, as I said, you can watch, and I have a link to the videos in Galtung, the one systemic problem that I'll keep on discussing because it's the easiest to understand is the relationship between, again, property tax and educational opportunities. The more you pay in property tax, the better, edu the better educational properties you have. The less you pay in property tax, the less educational properties you have. Obviously, those who do not have um, enough money to pay higher property tax are represented by a particular color across the United States, which is not to say that um, there aren't poor white folk. There's a lot of poor white folk, but there's a lot more poor uh, black and Latino folk, right? So um, it's important to recognize uh, that distinction. Now, the liberal structuralist is, there's a counterpoint to that, and um, Wes identifies this other group that seeks to transform the plight of the African American community as the conservative behaviorist. And the question is, well, what is the, who is the conservative behavior, behaviorist? And here's a quote from West. Cornel West says, um, depending, on the cult, depending on the cultural revival of the Protestant ethic in black America, this notion of conservative behaviorism it depends, it rests on the cultural revival, right? I love the word revival, right? It's the revival of the Protestant ethic in black America. And the idea is, if black Americans would just sort of tap into that which is already there and revive their Protestant work ethic and just assume this diligent sort of uh, systematic approach to hard work, then it's that hard work ethic that would transform their plight. Um, the, conservatives, the conservative behaviorists also subscribe to free, free market economics, right? Um, quote unquote motivational um, strategies, right? So the problem with the African American community is that they lack the motivation, right? They, they argue that lack of motivation, right? Lack of work ethic. Results in uh, results in impoverishment. Right. So the lack of uh, motivation, the lack of work ethic, all of these factors result in impoverishment. The point is to recognize that mm, the two polemic poles to this discourse, right? The liberal structuralist poll that says it's only systemic, it's only structural, or the conservative behaviorist poll that said it's only motivational it's all because they're lazy, are both too extreme. It's, it's, it's actually a combination of both. There is a sense in which, within the African American community, there are structures that oppress the population, and there is a sense in which some members of that population are, are not motivated, probably because of the incredible difficulty in transforming the system. Right? As we've recognized, systemic changes aren't done by individuals. Systemic changes are done by, you can have an individual to galvanize, like Martin Luther King or, or JFK or Mohammed Gandhi can galvanize the people, 
Martin Luther King